Welcome to section 14.5. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to do is compare the various theories that we've discussed throughout this chapter. So let's go ahead and talk about this molecule benzene. Now, you guys may have seen this hexagon in some of your book problems. Now, you guys will see these kind of structures in organic chemistry. And when you begin your organic chemistry chapters in Chem 1A, what we'll teach you is that at each vertice here is a carbon atom. So what we can do here is we can draw two resonance structures of benzene. If I were to take a look at the double bonds in this molecule, you can see that the double bonds are going to be in different places. Now, if we go ahead and do a resonance hybrid, sometimes you'll see the benzene molecule with this circle here. But let's talk about what's happening here and the bonding and the best way to describe the bonding in this molecule. So if we take a look at each one of those carbons in the benzene molecule, what you'll see is it is SN2. If it's SN2, that means I'm sp2 hybridized. And so what you'll see is that there are sp2 orbitals that are overlapping like so. Now this is going to form a bond between each one of these carbons, giving the skeletal structure of the molecule. We'll also see that the s orbital overlaps with one of these sp2 orbitals. Now what is left over is the unhybridized p orbitals. Now on each one of those carbons is an unhybridized p orbitals. Now I'm not showing you where those p orbitals are, but you guys can draw those p orbitals and they are going in and out of this page. So if I were to tilt the molecule over, you would see those p orbitals. Now the question becomes what p orbital is overlapping with what p orbital? If we were to just stick with a hybridization model. But it turns out what we can use is MO theory. Now remember, with MO theory, what I can say is that a p orbital is made from a shaded and an unshaded. And that's going to be true for each one of these p orbitals. And what I can do is constructively mix these orbitals together or destructively mix these orbitals together. And what you guys will see are the pictures of the molecular orbitals I can generate. Now you guys will go ahead and discuss this in great detail in organic chemistry. But here's the take home message that I wanna to bring to you guys. When you have resonance structures, what you're showing are electrons that are moving around the molecule. These are called delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons are best described using MO theory. That gets us the best description of how these electrons are spread out across the molecule. Hybridization doesn't really deal with multiple p orbitals altogether. When we do Lewis dot structures and hybridization, they call this the localized electron theory. They do well when you lock electrons in one place, meaning they are good when I'm looking at bonds that are not in resonance meaning the single bonds in my molecule that give the skeletal structure. And this is what chemists do. We have a whole bunch of theories and we're trying to apply these theories to what information we want to garner and how in depth we want to describe our molecule. So it is a toolkit that we're going to use to explain certain phenomenon and to predict certain characteristics. Understand these are theories. Orbitals are a human construct to try to rationalize our natural world. Now to end this chapter, I wanna talk about the Nobel Prize winners in 2013. And that was Carplus, Levitt, and Warshaw. And they got their Nobel Prize for modeling chemical compounds. Now, as we traverse through Gen Chem, you guys saw me draw pictures, use little balls and sticks to try to show you molecular models. Now, the same idea is still applied in cutting edge research, but instead they are using computers to model gigantic molecules. What you guys dealed with were small molecules made out of maybe five or six atoms. If you guys go into pharmaceutical industries, virology, 
or any of the biochemical sciences and sometimes the material sciences, you're going to be dealing with molecules that are ginormous. So in this picture, each one of these little dots represents an atom. And so we can get molecules that are hundreds of thousands of atoms big. And if we wanna go ahead and try to build a model or a shape of that molecule to understand its reactivity, what people are doing is using computer programs to do this because there's a lot of calculations involved, there's a lot of angles, there's a lot of lone pairs, bonds, and everything involved. And so what we can do is we can build these large molecules in silico or in a computer and go ahead and try to design experiments that we think will be fruitful. So we can cut down on a lot of experimental time by modeling the molecules beforehand. With that said, gentle people, I want to go ahead and congratulate you on completing Chem 1A. I know this is a very rigorous course and you put in a lot of time to get through it. So I wanna go ahead and wish you well on your upcoming finals and hope that everything made sense in this class. And remember Chem 1A to stay safe.